An LGBTIQ plus classic that was interesting. A cozy mystery with a twist. And a way to be welcomed back to a world with open arms. Welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads. <laughs> Yes, hello, and welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads, talking all the books I read this week. And I read three books. I'm so proud of myself. I stuck to my schedule, and I got through them all, which means I've read a total of four books so far in the month of April. So let's discuss the first one. The first book that I read uh, this week was this book, Maurice by E. M. Forster. This is an adult classic book, and I gave this book 3.5 stars. This book came recommended thanks to Casey from Books and Bobs, who recommended this book to me in honour of my two years plus on Booktube. So thank you very much, Casey. You know what? Let's put an image up there. It, even though it was an adult classic, it felt more like an adult fictitious memoir, because we were following Maurice from a, being a young child all the way through until his later adult years. And uh, because of that, I had a few little qualms with the book, but ultimately it did deserve a 3.5 star rating. Let me explain. So this book was very hard for me to feel settled in until about the halfway mark. While I can appreciate this more now, considering it was originally written in 1917, uh, it was not published until 1970, however, because the author very much related to Maurice's journey. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the book follows Maurice as he goes throughout his life, struggling to deal with the fact that he is gay, when there is nothing worse than being a homosexual back then. So, yeah, it, it, it was a tough book to read. But, um, yeah, Ian Forster was going through something very similar, and so, therefore, he, while he wrote the book to help himself, I'm sure it was a rather cathartic experience for him, he did not want it published until the laws had changed. Fortunately, by 1970, they had changed enough for the book to get published, but unfortunately, Ian Forster was not around to see the work get published. The book was very hard for me to feel settled in until about the halfway mark. While I can appreciate this more now, considering it was originally written in 1917, it was tough to handle at the time. I felt for the first half that it was more of a fictional memoir, as I said, uh, as opposed to a fictional story. This is because we jump so much. You guys, oh my goodness. We jump so much in the first half. Like, he is a kid for about... Oh, I don't even know, like maybe a chapter if we're lucky, then we jump and suddenly he's another age, we get a couple of paragraphs, then we jump again, and we jump 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 some more, and then suddenly he's an adult, and we get into the second half of the book and things start to slow down. Now, I'm not someone who appreciates a slow burn book, but at the same time, I'm definitely not someone who appreciates a book that moves so fast that I don't feel settled. And if I don't feel settled, considering I don't mind your average fast paced read, then slow readers, slow burn readers will really struggle with the first half because you can't really, you're not slowing down enough for me to get invested in the characters. Also, um, the way that uh, sodomites, what we now refer to as gay people, but back then was referred to as sodomites, uh, were treated back then uh, was uh, absolutely horrible. And uh, so that was tough to read for me, being a gay guy myself, but I appreciated the fact that E.M. Forster was able to write it down to reflect the time. The picture that was being painted with this book was that it's actually, you'll be way better off being a mass murderer than being gay. And so that I, I really struggled with that quite a lot. 
However, there were some pros. Once the book slowed down enough for me to actually soak in what was happening in certain points of Maurice's life, it became a much more interesting read. Towards the end, we literally deal with two people who are from very different classes. So we have a boy, uh, a guy who is from the poorer class and a guy that's from a medium to richer class. I love books that explore the differences between a class or caste system. So I very much appreciated that. And the ending was just absolutely fantastic. I couldn't praise it enough at all. I, I don't know if that's necessarily how things ended for E.M. Forster, but it just ended in a way that just made me so happy. So ultimately I had to split the difference and then just give it a smidgen more and I gave it 3.5 stars. So the next book that I read I don't own a physical copy of but best believe there is one on the way and that is this book, Murder at Pirate's Cove by Josh Lanyon. The premise of this book is that we're following Ellery who has inherited a bookshop uh, from he, yeah, from someone in his family that's passed away. I don't remember the exact relation, but anyway. And this bookshop uh, is in uh, Pirate's Cove, where the book is set. Pirate's Cove is a very interesting small town because everyone in Pirate's Cove seems to take the name incredibly theatrically seriously to the point that sometimes they even dress up in piratey outfits and act like pirates. And I mean emphasis on the term act, which I loved. Uh, but yeah, with this book, we are following Ellery, who is dealing with the bookshop that has been placed into his lap. It's not doing well at all, and in fact, he has heard that the relative that bequeathed it to him was actually considering selling. So, Ellery is visited multiple times by a real estate guy who wants to give him a fair price and is really pushing Ellery to sell, but Ellery doesn't want to sell. He loves the fact that he gets to own a bookstore and he's loving living in Pirate's Cove. So he keeps telling the real estate guy, no, 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 I'm not going to sell, to the point that they start having an argument. The very next day, uh, Ellery comes back to his bookstore to find this real estate agent has been murdered. And what makes things worse is that Inspector Carson believes that Ellery is the prime suspect. So Ellery has to do everything he can in order to try and uh, solve the case to prove his own innocence. What I love about this cosy so much is that this cosy is a twist on your standard cosy. I love my cosy mysteries so, so, so much. But this cozy mystery does something that no other cozy that I've read so far has done. This is an LGBTIQ plus cozy that features a male male romance. Oh my goodness, there is so much to unpack with that, so let's begin. First of all, generally speaking in a cozy mystery we are following a female protagonist. Generally speaking with that female protagonist, that female protagonist is straight. So to Follow a male protagonist in a cozy is extremely rare in and of itself. To follow a male protagonist in a cozy that has been written by a male whose male name is on the cover is extremely rare. But if you want something that's even more rare, we're not only following a male protagonist, but we are following a male protagonist that is gay. And I love that so much. There really does need to be more diversity in, um, in books in general. And with diversity when it comes to cozies, this is something I definitely appreciate because I love my cozies. You guys know how much I love my cozies, but I think it's, it's really good to be able to break the mold and follow a male protagonist as opposed to a female one and to follow one that is gay. I mean, it's wonderful. Why not? Spread the wings. Look, I have to say that I gave this book 3.5 stars and let me explain why. The mystery side of it just did not appeal to me. Uh, it made sense. I appreciated that, uh, we had this bad guy that died. That generally does happen in a cozy, and I did appreciate the motivation that Ellery had to solve it, because if he doesn't solve it, then he's the one that's going to go down for this crime that he did not commit. But uh, overall, I just did not 
really like the mystery side. But the cozy side I absolutely loved. Pirate's Cove is just such a unique town in the way that it takes the name to a theatrical degree so seriously, and I love that. I loved following Ellery, uh, who is gay, who is looking for love, and I love the, um, the romance moments of the book, which... I have to say there aren't too many, but by the time we get to the end of the book, we can definitely see where the series might be headed, which I definitely appreciated. Along the way, Ellery ends up hiring someone to work with him in the bookstore, and she is so amazing that I will say this because I don't think it's a spoiler. She recommends as a way to make more money to start some uh, book uh, groups and clubs in the store, and the first two that she thinks that he should start is... One, a cozy mystery reading group, and two, a cozy mystery writing group. Oh my goodness, love it, love it, love it. Yeah, so I loved this book enough to keep going. I definitely will be, and I gave it 3.5 stars. Highly recommend if you want to see something different in your cozies. So the final book that I read then was this book, which is The Selection by Kiera Cass. Let's put an image of that up on the screen. Okay, so this is a reread for me, and I was reading this book for the, um, I was reading this book for a series read along that I'm doing on my channel in my Discord. Uh, we're going to be reading one selection, one book in the selection series per month, and this is the first one. The basic premise of this book is that we're following a woman by the name of America Singer who is living in a world known as Ilya that is set in a dystopian future that is uh, shaken up by a really tyrannical caste system, uh, which there are a number of different classes and all of these classes live by the means that they can owing to that class, but they're also limited in what they can do profession-wise. So America is known as a number five and fives are very low on the class scale. Number one is the highest. It is reserved for royalty. All that the fives can do is something in the arts uh, area, so they can be painters, sculptors, performers, something like that, but that's all they can really do. One day it is announced that the selection is going to occur. Any girl of an appropriate age uh, can enter themselves in for the chance to take part in kind of like a Bachelor situation, the Bachelor TV show kind of situation, but set at the Royal Castle because the prince is looking to be married and he hardly ever leaves the castle. So this is the best way to introduce him to women and many sign up. And the only real uh, objective they have, at least at the beginning, is to at least have one girl representing each class and we see how we go. It is a dystopian book, and the reason it is a dystopian is not only because of the class system, but there are rebels who really don't like how things are playing out in Ilya that are fighting against the castle, and we get to uh, see this happen quite a bit in the first book. I really loved this read. I definitely felt welcomed back to Ilya with open arms, and I gave it five stars for my first read. I'm glad to say, and that was in March of 2020, I'm glad to say that that rating still holds up today. I gave this five stars again after completing it earlier on today. So those are the three books that I read this week. Now let's take a look at the books that I plan to read next week or in the coming week. I have two books that I plan to read, but they're both incredibly long. They're at least tomes, which means they are 500 pages plus. Let's check them out. The first book that I plan to read this week is this book, Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer. This is the fourth book in the Twilight Saga, and once I've read this book, I'll be able to cross it off my sass list, and it will be the first series that I do cross off as being done. So I'll be very happy with that. I love the Twilight Saga so much. You guys know it if you've followed my channel long enough, and so I'm really excited to get back into this series. Once that is finished, I'm going to pick up this book, which is a finally situation. It is the third book in the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan, which is called The Mark of Athena. I'm so incredibly excited to get to this book because I loved book one when I, like with the selection, read it back in March of 2020. I was following three characters by the names of Piper, Jason, and Leo, and then I read book two late last year, and we were following different characters. 
But the good news is, I've already checked the premise. In book three, we go back to following Piper, Leo, and Jason, and I couldn't be more excited. So that's kind of thing where things stand at the moment. All right, I want to give some reading sprint shoutouts before I do leave. First of all, I want to give a very big thank you to everyone on my Discord who joined me earlier today for my Discord sprint. It was a whole lot of fun. Moving forward, here is the schedule for the rest of the week. Coming up on Friday at 6 p.m. American Eastern Time, there is going to be a sprint on my dear friend Stormy's channel, which is Storm Reads. So go along and join that one. Subscribe to Storm Reads if you haven't already. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when that does occur. On Saturday, uh, I do believe that uh, Tiffany from the Beach Bum Bookworm is doing a Killing Time with Cozy's chat. I think it's around midday or one o'clock, somewhere around there. Look, You'll have to subscribe to Tiffany's channel to get that one. That one's a tough one for me to get to in my time zone, but um, that's happening on Saturday during the day. Then at 6 p.m. Eastern, we are going to do another reading sprint on my Discord. So if you haven't joined the Discord, link to that is in the description. We have a lot of fun over there. We certainly did earlier today. I have a text channel where we can you can type things. And then we also have a voice channel where we all get to chat together. And it was a whole lot of fun. It was like one of those group meetings where I think we had about six different people in there at one time. And we're all just talking to each other about what we're reading. It was so much fun. So if you want to join that, I'll be doing that again on Saturday. That'll be Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Then on Sunday, we are taking a day off from sprints. Then on Monday, I will be here on my channel doing a sprint at 6 p.m. Eastern. Then on Tuesday, I'm going to be doing another Discord sprint at 6 p.m. Eastern. And then on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, Tiffany from the Beach Bum Bookworm has her own uh, reading sprint that she does. So be sure to go over to the Beach Bum Bookworm and to Storm Reads and subscribe and hit their notification bells so that you don't miss out on a reading sprint. The good news is that with the exception of one day, because I need a day somewhere to recover, but with the exception of one day, there is always going to be a reading sprint at 6 p.m. Eastern somewhere so that you can get some good old-fashioned reading done. So take advantage while you can. But in the meantime, that is where I am going to leave it, letting you guys go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'll see you again soon. Mwah. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Be kind, love one another, and spread that sparkling energy all around the world. And until next time, happy reading!